Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at yet another uh, RX 480 PCB. Uh, today, the RX 480 Red Devil from Power Color. And before we sort of get into the actual PCB breakdown video, I'd like to preface this with some um, stuff about the RX 480 Red, Red Devil. So, when the RX 480 Red Devil launched, it sort of got, I'd say, pretty good reviews. And so a bunch of people started go going out and buying the card, because obviously it got good reviews. And from just like the social media I follow, I noticed a lot of people complaining about low power limits. Right? And then PowerColor later on uh, went and released a high power limit BIOS for the Red Devil. Except that they also included a warning. Uh, with the BIOS, which said, do not run Furmark on this card while using this BIOS. And we will see today, right here, exactly why they, why, why they, uh, why they said that about the high power BIOS. Because this here PCB is kinda, kinda subpar, to say the, the least. So, you know, let, let's get on with it, and, and you'll see exactly why it is that PowerColor initially shipped this card with such a, such a lockdown, pa uh, lockdown BIOS. So, first things first, this right here is the core voltage VRM. So, that's just, you know, regular RX 480 stuff. Uh, it does look very much like a stretched version of the reference PCB, um, in terms of just, like, component shape, component layout. I mean, this whole area basically is identical to the reference. Uh, and then this basically this basically got stretched a bit. There's not really anything extra, that much extra there. Um, so yeah, so we got core voltage right here. Above it we have the auxiliary, so you know, that goes to the GPU core, and that's the uh, memory controller voltage. That also, you know, V core obviously goes to the GPU core as well. Below both of those, we have the 0.95 volt rail right here. That's also copy pasted. Well, that's literally copy pasted off of the reference card. Um, so that hasn't changed from the reference design. And we're not going to discuss it because it's the 0.95 volt rail. It really doesn't matter for 99% uh, of use cases. Like, you don't even really need it for liquid nitrogen. It's just nice to have it modded on liquid nitrogen because it helps with black screen issues. Um, and then finally, over here, we have the memory voltage VRM, which is kind of a bit stretched out for no apparent reason. And that's controlled by this here voltage controller, which is the same exact voltage controller that you would find on a reference RX 480. So uh, if, you know, you're smart and you look up my uh, RX reference RX 480 vo uh, memory volt mod, um, it's not really a guide, it's basically just a photo detailing how to do the vault mod. Um, you can totally adapt it for this card. However, it, I, it, it probably won't get you anywhere because the uh, RX 480 uh, GPUs are locked to nine, uh, 9 gigahertz maximum memory speed. So I guess if your card has a hard time hitting 9 gigahertz, then, you know, this might be useful for you. But generally speaking, I don't think it'll do anything. Um, too useful, and it's not really worth doing for those reasons. So, yeah, and obviously the memory VRM powers your uh, GDDR5 chips, so all of those guys. So, now that we have uh, the, you know, VRM locations covered, let's get on to the details and the bad end of this here uh, PCB breakdown. So, we have two MOSFETs in each phase, so each phase basically looks like this for core voltage. Of the inductor, uh, and then, and yeah, and it does include this chip right here. So that is part of it, so that's our driver IC. This is the low side MOSFET, that's the high side MOSFET. The high side MOSFET is a 4C0, uh, 4C10 from or on semiconductor. Um, so, let's put it this way. The reference card has a uh, MDU1514, which is rated at 66 amps at 25 degrees centigrade, uh, case temperature. This is rated at 46 amps at 25 degrees case temperature. Uh, at 80 degrees case temperature, this does 34 amps, and the MDU1514 does 50 amps. 
this VRM is much, much worse than the reference design. This is actually even worse than the, the Gigabyte card, which I, you know, which I just, which was the last RX 480 I, uh, I broke down the PC before. And I said the Gigabyte was bad, well, this is worse. Okay, so, yeah. These are some absolutely crap uh, MOSFET choices. So, yeah, you, you got six phases of uh, four C10s. So, you know, yeah, that, that's just, yeah. So that's pretty much why PowerColor says not to run Firmark on the card when running the high power BIOS, because these things will go bye-bye. They will literally, one of them will catch fire, and then you'll get 12, 12 volts pretty much straight to your GPU. Uh, not repairable, you know, non-repairable damage completely totaling your card. Uh, it's not like you can swap out the MOSFET and, like, depending on which direct, like, how it, the MOSFET failed, you're probably going to end up with 12 volts going straight to the GPU core, in which case, even if the, if you somehow replaced the toasted MOSFET, uh, your card is still useless, you know, so, lovely, absolutely lovely. So, yeah, definitely don't run Furmark on this card. I honestly, when I first saw the warning about Firmark, I was like, there's no way this can't run Firmark. This looks exactly like a reference PCB that got stretched a little bit. Well, it's not a reference PCB that got stretched a little bit. It's a reference PCB that got stretched a little and had all of its MOSFETs replaced by something significantly cheaper. Well, I don't even know if they're cheaper. I just know they're crappier, that's for sure. They're definitely worse MOSFETs than what, what you would find on the reference card. So the low side is garbage. I mean, high side, yeah, high side MOSFET. The high side MOSFETs are garbage. Uh, the low side isn't quite as bad, and actually the low side is completely fine, which is really surprising. So the low side is a 49, so that's this MOSFET right here. So that's a 4983, also from on semiconductor. That's rated at 106 amps, uh, and it derates down to 76 at 85 degrees case temperature, which is actually slightly worse than the MDU 15, uh, 1517s uh, are on the reference card, but this is the low side, and basically the high side always goes first as soon as the, like, basically if the high side has uh, half the current rating, uh, half the continuous current rating of the low side, the high side's probably going to die first. So I wouldn't really be concerned about the low side's rating when the high side is this bad. Um, so, yeah, good job, Power Color. Um, this 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 is by far the worst V Core VRM we have seen. Literally the worst. And actually, I haven't seen a worse card. So there, so that you don't forget. And yeah, so this is by far the worst V Core VRM of any RX four eighty you can buy. Um, Definitely don't recommend buying the card. Sorry, it's just like they even power color themselves admitted that the VRM is bad. They first chipped it with a low power limit, and then when they gave us a high power limit, they tell us not to run Firmark on it, which basically says it's gonna explode if you try to run Firmark on it. So yeah, great, lovely. I basically uh, that means just use the power color BIOS. Never run the never try to run Firmark or anything super intensive like that. Um, so no MSI combustor either. Combustor and Furmark are pretty much the same, if I remember correctly. And I haven't used either of them in ages because basically all of these super heavy stress uh, stress tests don't really work that well because they'll trip a bunch of uh, power protections on most cards and then they'll downclock and you basically get completely useless results from testing with them. Um, so yeah, so no combustor, no Furmark. So basically no Firmark clones, and yeah, so this, this here VRM is completely uh, garbage, by far the worst RX 480 VRM, and acknowledged by PowerColor, but as long as you follow PowerColor's advice about not running Firmark and not putting a different BIOS on the card, so like God help you if you try something like the Elmore high power BIOS, which lets you run up to 1.4 volts through GPU tweak and 225 watt power limit for the GPU core, uh, I'm pretty certain you could actually blow the card up with that BIOS even running something like 3D Mark or Unigine Heaven. So yeah, good job Power Color. Great job. I mean, it's fine for most average gamers, but if you want to do some serious overclocking, definitely avoid this card. Um, and if you have this card, then like, 
do something about the VRM. Like, absolutely, you must do something about the VRM. Get, like, some insane cooling for it. Uh, figure out some kind of heat sinking setup. Uh, doesn't really matter what. You just need to get a giant heat sink, get a lot of airflow, and, and, you know, maybe even get a temperature probe and try to monitor the VRM temperature. Because if that VRM goes much, much above those 80 degrees that it's rated to do 34 amps at, I don't really have a lot of faith in it surviving. So, yeah. Um, above the atrocious V-Core VRM, we find the auxiliary. And since the auxiliary doesn't really do anything, it doesn't really matter that it uses the exact same MOSFETs as the V-Core VRM. So this is fine. So that's good. But this is just completely atrocious. Uh, we're ignoring this because that's, you know, basically LN2 use only, and even there it's not really that useful. Uh, so that leaves the memory VRM over here. So we have the same high side MOSFET, so that's a 4C10 again. And then we have different low side MOSFETs, so these are 4C05s. Uh, um, and those are both rated at 78 amps each. Uh, I don't know, they don't look like they have a heat sink, so it actually makes the sense that they're super overrated because... Uh, Basically, they're, you know, they don't have any kind of active cooling, so two 78 amp MOSFETs um, with no, no airflow over them basically derate down into the 34 amps a piece range. So basically, you have a, you know, 40 amp memory VR, 30 to 40 amp memory VRM, which is fine because it's a memory VRM. It really doesn't need to deliver that much power. But yeah, um, th this core voltage VRM is just so 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 bad just so 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 bad and it's really sad because this was one of like the rx 480s which even i was like oh this is this is like a good rx 480 it has a good cooler it's not super expensive it has a bile switch over here and then there's this thing which is just disastrously terribly awfully bad and there's just like yeah i I mean, I understand why they did it. It's obviously to save money, because there's really no other excuse. There's no other reason to lower your your MOSFET quality um, in terms of just raw handling, like raw current handling capabilities, this much, you know. So, yeah, they. Th I mean, you get a cheap RX 480, and as long as you don't want to do anything too extreme with it, then it'll be fine. But if you're into BIOS tweaking or whatever, then I'm sorry. This is just not the right card to use for that kind of thing. Because if you give it a, you know, if you mod the BIOS to allow some ridiculously high power limit, your VRM's up in smoke. Um, if, you, if, you mod the VR, uh, if you mod the BIOS for extra voltage, no VRM. If you try to run on LN2, probably no VRM either. It's just like great. Good job, Power Color. You were so close, you know, so, so freaking close to making a card where I would go, like, yeah, this is a good RX 480, go buy this. So close, you know, you just had to not use a terrible high side MOSFET. But you went and used a terrible high side MOSFET, so what, what am I supposed to do about that? Well, the card's terrible. That's that for this video. Um. I'm sorry for ruining everybody's, like, hopes and dreams for a cheap, you know, cheap, good RX 480, but it's the truth, so that, that's what I'm going to say. I mean, I'm personally, like, really disappointed even in myself, because I actually went out and recommended RX 480 Red Devils to people based on the fact that I assumed that it was just a stretched reference PCB. This is what happens when you don't have proper photos, right? It's like, yeah. So actually, speaking of photos, huge thanks to the guy who got me these photos, like, couldn't have done this video without you. This is freaking awesome. Uh, so, yeah, and he's one of the viewers, so huge thanks to him and shout out to him for, you know, providing the pictures. That's great. Um, yeah, that's that for this video. Uh, I hope you liked it, you know, so there's a like button. Even if you didn't like the information I told you, I hope you liked getting informed about this card not really being up to scratch. Uh, and, yeah, that's that's that for this video, so... That means like, share, subscribe, and do consider donating so that I can keep, you know, warning you about when companies make terrible cards that look like they might not really be that terrible in the end. Uh, 
I'm 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 really disappointed here because I I was honestly hoping the Red Devil would be pretty good, but no, no, you know you can't. There's still plenty of other good RX 480s which we will be covering soon. So you know if you're if you want to actually see RX 480s that you should buy, tune in for the next two videos that I'm going to be doing because that will be I think all of the RX 480s because I've done the Gigabyte, I've done the reference, uh, I've done the Strix, I've. I can't do the MSI because there's no data sheets for that one. Um, and that leaves the Nitro and the, XF, uh, the XFX or slash his card. So, you know, get excited for those. And do consider donating so that I can keep making more content. And you can donate through the Patreon link. So that's that for this. And see you guys next time.